Welcome to top five beginner errors in Python 3. Let's get started. Error number five is type error. Uh, just a quick review. So variables have types. So for example, age equals 42. This is an integer type. We have age equals, let's say, 42.0. That is a float. And we say age equals 42. That is a string. And then we also have the last type, which is age equals true or false. Uh, this is a Boolean. Okay, so Boolean only has two values. So a lot of beginners make this type of error. So let's say, for example, uh, let's say age equals input. You know, what is your age? And then they say, you know, if your age is greater than uh, 40, say print, sorry, you are getting old. Okay, so let's try that real quick. So I'm going to run that. Okay, so it says, what is your age? And I'm going to say, well, I'm right there. And you can see here, we've got an error. So it says, and this is another thing for beginners. It tells us line six. So I'm going to look at line six, and it's also printed here. Uh, you see type error, greater than, not supported between instances of string and int. Okay, so whenever you do input here, it returns a string. It doesn't matter if you type a number in to the computer, it is a string. Strings and integers are stored differently in the computer. So basically what you got to do is you have to convert this to a different type. So uh, in our case, we could convert it to an int, or we could convert it to a float. You can compare uh, floats and ints as well. So I'm going to run that one more time. I'm going to type the age 46, and it says, sorry, you're getting old. So there was no error, and it gave us the exact response that we should have got. So that is one of the main types of errors that beginners often run into uh, with this sort of thing. Another thing I'll see uh, is they'll put quotation marks around a number. Um, we don't put quotation marks around numbers unless we want to treat them as strings. So if we're looking at the, the value of 40, uh, then we would do it that way. So that is type 5, or sorry, I should say error number 5. Let's move on to error number 4, which is had that up there. Number four is, ah, very common. And this is number four. Okay, I'll, maybe I'll edit this out. I don't know. Uh, anyway. Okay. Error number four is if x equals y or z. Uh, although Python looks like English in a lot of cases, it is not. It has its own uh, rules of engagement. So let's see. I'm going to clear this out. And then let's say, so if I, I'll go back and I'll say, uh, let's see here, say score equals 98. Okay. Then I'll make an if statement. So if score equals 98 or 99 or 100, print. Awesome. Okay, so score equals 98. So let's run that. Okay, awesome. It looks like it's working. This is what happens. Beginners are like, oh my god, it works. I'm so happy. What happens if we change this to 97? It's still printing awesome. How about let's see I did really badly on the test. Awesome. So you can see here. There's an error, which wasn't apparent the first time we tested it because it gave us the result that we were looking for. So you have to be really careful when you do test things. Um, in Python, so what it does is it compares this first. So is it 98? Okay, my, uh, okay, it compares this first. And that's true. So basically it stops and it goes to the next thing. Now, if I put this 97, okay, 97 does not equal 8, okay, or 99. OK, 
Okay, now this is one of those weird things where you have to understand how computers work. Uh, 99 is always going to be true because we haven't converted it to anything or compared it to anything. So 99 is still 99. So what we have to do is score equals 99 or score equals 100. So we have to, on both sides of the or statement, we have to have a full expression here. Okay, so now if I run it, nothing happens because it wasn't 97, 99, or 98, 99, or 100. Uh, so let's test that. Then again, it's always good practice. Test all of your possible values. 98, 99, and 100. So again, that is a very, very common beginner error. Okay, let's move on to number three, which is a missed quotation mark. Okay, so this one's usually easy to locate in the spot, but you know, a lot of people still do this. So if I say print, uh, hello world, and then I forget the quotation mark there. Let's run that and see what kind of error we get. Okay, so you see we're here. We got a syntax error, EOL while scanning string literal. If you see this, you've basically, you have an imbalance in your parentheses or in your quotation marks somewhere. Okay, so EOL means end of line. So it reached the end of the line and it could not find the quotation mark. Now, you know, in Python, if you want to have multiple lines of printing, you can do this. Uh, hello world, glad to meet you. Okay, and that should work. Okay, now let's take off, let's take off quotation marks again, see what happens. Okay, again, now this is interesting. Now we've got EOF while scanning triple quoted string literal. Okay, EOF means end of file. Okay, so it's reached the end of the file because there's nothing else after that. Let me try and add a line or two here. Let's say print goodbye. Now notice how it still is changed. It's still in that kind of pink color because we never closed off this multi-line print statement. So let's see if that changes anything. Okay, nope. End of file while scanning triple quoted string literal. So it kind of tries to tell you at least what's going wrong. And that is basically, again, very, very common mistakes. Okay, so EOL while scanning string literal means you've probably forgotten a quotation mark. Again, very common for beginners. Next most common beginner error is indentation errors. Uh, so sometimes these errors are syntax errors, it stops the program. Sometimes it's just a logic error where the program keeps running. So let's say, for example, uh, we'll go back to our original example. Uh, let's say score equals 100. And let's say if score equals 100, print amazing. Okay. So oftentimes beginners will forget to indent. And it tells you what the problem is. This is one of the things that drives me nuts with my students, uh, is it tells you what the problem is. It generally tells you where the problem is. Okay, indentation expected and indented block. Okay, so there is our indented block. Now notice, I've got four spaces here. Okay, so now watch, watch. This is something that happens also with beginners, is they'll have an extra, just one little space, especially if you have a small font. They won't notice this extra space. Let me run that, see. Okay, so now we've got an unexpected indent on line eight. Again, it tells you where the problem is. And I can see that that is easily the problem. Now, another thing you might run into uh, is where this is uh, a tab character and not, a, not spaces, or you have spaces and not tabs. You cannot mix spaces and tabs. That's so just one of those things you gotta be very careful of. But it's something that you know, beginners often do. Um, another thing you might see is this type of indentation error where the program works. So I'm gonna run this. 
Okay, so Prince Amazing Truly. Um, let's say our score is 99 because we don't want to print Truly. So if I run that, it's still printing Truly. And there, my students will say, well, why is it printing Truly? Well, it's because it's outside of the if statement. So inside the if statement, outside the if statement. Okay, and you might see this also with for loops. So for uh, underscore in range you know, four, let's say, oops, let's say, let's say, what can we call it? You know, output quote. So output plus equals asterisk, and say print output. So now if I run this, I got a syntax error. Um, where is that? Line one, that's weird. This is like real live debugging. Um, oh, I'm in the exit. Okay, let's run that at the end. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four of these. But what I actually wanted was I just wanted to print the last line. So you might see a little error. Okay, so because this was indented inside the for loop, it was printing every time. Now, it depends on the, the problem that you're trying to solve. Sometimes you want it to print every line, sometimes you do not. So you really have to pay very careful attention in Python to indentation, whereas in other languages you would use curly braces. And that brings us to, that was actually number two, my apologies. And that brings us to number one missed parentheses usually a parenthesis at the end so you'll see this one quite a lot that is not what I want to do uh, it's really hard to talk and to code at the same time um, I want to clear the screen so missed parentheses so for example print hello and then I forget to close this so if I run that, you get an unexpected EOF. So it's actually gone to the end of the file, which there's nothing there, uh, and gives you an error. So it's weird. Um, let me run that again, just to make sure. So you see now it says the error is in line seven. So I go to line seven, of course there's nothing there. So how could there be an error? So an unexpected end of file. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna backtrack until I get to a line and I see, okay, I'm missing a parenthesis. Um, another way this might manifest itself is print, let's say put world there. And if I take off this parenthesis and I run it, you'll see the error comes up in line seven. It shows as occurring in line seven. And this, this is really confuses newbies. So print world, they look at it, the line is fine. It's because it was caused by this missing parenthesis. Because what's happening is the Python interpreter is still looking for that, that right parenthesis. It can't find it and it gets down here and it's like, okay, yeah, there's a syntax error, okay? So that is pretty much the number one error I see with my students. Fortunately, it's very, very easy to fix, very, very easy to diagnose. Um, so yeah, that is that. Uh, thanks for listening.